Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and we are here where we practice facts over feelings, as you all know already. If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please hit that subscribe button right now, pound the like button, ring the bell, and jump on board to Come On Now podcast train. Also become a member today as we are dropping some membership content very, very soon, and we'll be doing membership lives. If you haven't subscribed yet to my second channel, at Rudy's Rant on YouTube, please do now, as I'll be dropping another video on there tonight. So jump on board. Mad Dog Russo is a guest on First Take uh, with Stephen A. Smith, and in this particular week, he was on there with Stephen A. Smith. Kendra Perkins, and Brian Windhorse, along with Molly Curl. Mad Dog Russo is known for giving his loud takes, kind of like myself. Um, he believes in the 60s basketball a little bit more than I do, because he was alive. I wasn't. Um, however, obviously the topic of conversation on Wednesday morning was LeBron James and Barney James. And I have already done a video on this on my opinion but I wanted to, you to hear Mad Dog's opinion on this entire thing because obviously I probably agree with what he's going to say. I've heard it already, so I know I agree with what he's going to say. Um, I don't agree with all of it, but I do agree with a lot of it. And I think listening to it, it's kind of amusing how much of a group of puppets people on first take are. Molly Kerm's an embarrassment. Kendrick Perkins don't have any idea what the fuck he's talking about half the time. And Brian Windhorse is a shill. Stephen A. Smith plays the fence. He never takes that. I mean, he thinks he takes a hard line approach. But I have never seen a bunch of puppets the way I've seen the, the strings being pulled in these puppets, as I saw in this episode, sucking off the first appearance of Bronny James in the most staged, yes, staged, contrived, bogus, fraudulent manner than what I saw on Tuesday night, where Bronny James enters the game with his father, as if that is not a planned, staged entrance, and then only plays two minutes and 41 seconds. And then there's the comparisons to the Ken Griffey Sr., Ken Griffey Jr. dynamic. Well, Ken Griffey Sr. was still a decent baseball player. I wouldn't call him a great baseball player at 41 or whatever age he was, but he's still a decent baseball player, whereas Ken Griffey Jr. was considered the next Willie Mays. And he was one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Ronnie James isn't even in that conversation of being decent. Like, it's, it's insanity. So I'm going to play what Mad Dog had to say, and I'm going to jump in a few times here and there. But I'm going to play the audio of it. But let's calm down. Nobody in America, this might be fun for LeBron. Nobody in America cares that Mad Bonnie dog. James played three minutes and grabbed one rebound and they, at 11 o'clock at night in the opener. And this is supposed to be a, a moment that America is going to resonate with. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm being serious now. And I, and I love the kid. All right. Hard, we know we had the major issue at USC. And, I, and LeBron's great. He's an all-timer. He's always been a phenomenal player. He stays out of trouble. Who doesn't like LeBron? I mean, he's not Jordan. But who doesn't love LeBron? Everybody loves LeBron. I can't but to make right a now. big deal. See, every time Molly Kerm pot pipes in, I want to vomit. Listening to her, her, it's like nails on chalkboard. I can't believe Mad Dog. Ugh. This is sports. This isn't freaking tiddlywings. This isn't Connect Four. This isn't, you know, some feel-good moment that you're supposed to have. These are earned spots, earned contracts earned opportunities, none of which was done here. Because J.J., and I love Reddick, I'm rooting for him hard here. Yeah, me but too. The I hope Reddick falls flat on his egotistical, arrogant face. Yeah, I hope he falls flat on his egotistical, arrogant face. He thinks his shit don't stink. He's been an asshole to the media already. So no, I don't. I I couldn't care less if he does well or, or good or bad. I actually, if he went did badly, it would make me laugh to see how he reacts because his ego will be bruised and he will start getting shredded as the 
bus driver, janitor, coach, because that's what he's his qualifications are for being a head coach. He's a bus driver. He's a janitor. He's a plumber. He didn't earn his coaching position, never coached before in his life. So, no, I don't I, – I, I hate the Lakers, by the way. Put it out there. The idea that he put him in for three minutes, he grabbed him in a couple of shots, and this is the greatest moment in professional sports. Man. It's absolutely absurd. It was not the greatest moment in professional sports. This is absolutely preposterous that people think that. And this is the Molly Kerm her freaking mouth. I mean, we got to be serious. They this made is... history. Oh, it's LeBron. Me. It wasn't history. See, that's how stupid she sounds. It's not history when it's paid for. It's staged. It's corrupted. It was corrupted. It's not history. It is not history. What if the freaking owner of the team, Jeannie Buss, ha I don't know if she has any sons or not. I have no idea. What if she decides, you know what? I am going to go play basketball for the NBA now. Can you stop me? I'm an owner of a team. But let's let's use a different let's use a different example. How about we go Mickey Arison? Mickey Arison was the Heat, the Miami Heat owner. He's 70 plus years old, I think at this point. 70 plus years old. Let's say he says, you know what? I'm gonna be on the Miami Heat roster. I'm gonna play a game. And you know who else is gonna play? My son, Nick Arison, who's the CEO of the Miami Heat. We are both gonna be on the team this year. What? Do something about it. You ain't doing shit. They own the team. So would that be history? No, it'd be bullshit. It would be complete and utter bullshit. It wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be history. If you think what happened on Tuesday is history, you're a buffoon. It was not history. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. A bought and paid for spot, a player being paid Ten times more than the pick last year in the same position? Same draft position? Ten times more. Four times more per season. Actually, so I'm sorry. Four, eight, 16 times more over the, over the course of the contract. His contract is worth 16 times more than what that was of Isaiah Wong, who was ACC Player of the year out of the University of Miami and a far better player than Bronny James. This isn't even a conversation. This is embarrassing. This wasn't a history. No, it's historically embarrassing, historically despicable, and a historically bad look for the NBA. Even worse, ESPN needs to be in L.A. TNT needs to be in L.A. No, you don't. No, the hell you don't. In fact, the NBA puts them on the first night of the year. I mean, stop. The whole fucking league is corrupted right now. And they have no idea what dignity and ethics and integrity are. There's none of it in this league. Don't tell me this is history. This is an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment of riches. Congratulations, LeBron. You have so much clout. That you can freaking you can determine, and what's the other word I'm looking for? You can determine and you can dictate that your son will be on your team and he will play in the first game of the season. And he'll be slid in there late in the second quarter so he can't completely mess it up and play like trash for two minutes and 41 seconds and be a, a wide eye, a doe eyed deer, or whatever, a wide eyed deer. Chicken with his head cut off, not knowing what to do, completely out of his element, completely unqualified, scared to death. Yes, the kid was scared to death. I'm sorry, I have a bug in my freaking fly here. I mean, give, give me a damn break. Let's keep playing. But yeah, Molly Kerr will say, oh my God, this is history. Stop. Fuck out of here. Junior and Ken, Ken Griffey, yeah, Junior but and Ken NBA, Griffey made He's one of the greatest players of all time. Uh, the ultimate dream realized playing alongside his. His dream. His dream. The ultimate dream. Get the fuck out of here. Is that what the NBA is now? We give dream. We make dreams come true for pro for NBA players. Are we gonna go give Gilbert Arenas a contract when his son is in the NBA? Gets to the NBA so they can play together next? Because guess what? Gilbert Arenas' son is way better than Bronny James. Son, well, the me... iconic. 
purple and right. gold. Can I ask you a question? Sure. If LeBron James is not the second greatest player in the history of basketball, would this be a story? Fuck no. It would be a story, but not nearly as well, It wouldn't be a story. You're lying. You're lying. You want to know why you're lying? Because there would be no other person would ever have this happen. Unless they're having a kid when they're 15 years old. How, I mean, what do you want to, these guys be having kids when they're 15? How many guys are playing to their 40 at this level? Most of the guys are in the league by now. But let's say there was some random 40 year old. Let's say Udonis Haslam had a son. You think Udonis Haslam has that level of pull and clout to get his son, unqualified son, to be in the NBA? Hell no. Hell no. This is this is a story LeBron. because we're making Bron we're making LeBron, you know, you can make the argument that the Lakers got Bronny to begin with to as Wendy just said, to energize LeBron. So that puts a qualification on it. Well, hold on now. He's only on the team because LeBron's 40. He's their star. So as a result, that, that's a second-round pick. Three minutes. Let's throw him out okay. there. Sorry, folks. Guys. I ain't buying it. You Stephen guys a. go crazy. Nothing more order. important than Call family. Me want. I can't get into it. Go ahead. What the, fuck, what the fuck is she talking about? Nothing's more important than family. What are you talking about, Molly? God. Do you just, do, do you practice this shit? Nothing's more important than family. Great. Yeah, I agree. You're right. That ain't got shit to do with the NBA. That ain't got shit to do with basketball. That ain't got shit to do with this situation. There is a player right now not on this roster because of Bronny James. A player who might actually do something. And before we say Bronny's the 15th man on the roster, no, he's not. Because there are other players that did not play. There were players that were inactive. He came in 10th. So right now, he's the 10th man on their roster. Despite the fact there are players that sat who are better than him. By a mile. And she wants to come with that nonsense? God bless Mad Dog. I mean... It, you know what's funny is I have another one that I'm going to drop on Rudy's rant reaction to his interview on Dan Patrick. I want you to check that one out. I want you to listen to the differences between this crap on ESPN and real shit on Dan Patrick. Because on ESPN, he toned it down. On Dan Patrick, he toned it up. He went mad dog. Because ESPN's a puppet league and a bunch of bullshit. Whether it's the WNBA pandering, this pandering, that pandering. Like, there's no there's no integrity left in this shit anymore. It's fucking embarrassing. And I'm sad for what's happened to sports. That this is where we've gone. As if your league doesn't have enough money. You just signed a gazillion dollar freaking television deal. Like, you have enough money. You don't... Bronny James is not bringing viewers. Please don't think that he brought viewers. People are watching the damn Lakers. Keep it a buck. People are already watching the Lakers. You know what the TV ratings were on, 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 on night one for the NBA on TNT? Three million. Game one, Boston Celtics, New York Knicks, the average for the night was three million, which was still better than game five of the WNBA finals that have so much momentum. Stop it. Let me continue this crap right here. Let's continue with this part with uh, Windhorse and then Mad Dog jumps back in again. The history. I appreciate you're, you're it from Lamont. History. Wendy, uh, and I, we got to let Kendrick talk here too. I'm sure he's mad at me. I appreciate <laughs> that from a LeBron's <laughs> perspective. But Ken Griffey Jr. was the next Willie Mays, and yes. everybody knew it. Kendrick, Ken Griffey Sr. was a 300 hitter on two great all-time teams, Cincinnati Reds. He, they were both great. The, the junior was better, but Ken Griffey Sr. was great. LeBron's an all-timer. Bronny James, to me, based on his collegiate career, based on the fact that he's LeBron's son, and, that's, and we're going to placate LeBron, the idea that he's playing three minutes, I can argue whether he should even be on a team. He should be in the G League, which, by the way, is what Shaq and Barkley said last night, that he shouldn't be on. He should be on the G League to get minutes. The both of them. G League, he shouldn't be in the league. With respect, 
G League. He shouldn't be in the league. Fuck the G League. He's not better than G League players. He's not better than he is not better than any professional player in any league in this world. Real shit. Go to Puerto Rico, he would get muddied. Go to Europe, he would get creamed. Australia destroyed. Any league in this world, he would get smoked. Maybe he'd be do okay in Taiwan with Dwight Howard. I don't know. Or whatever the hell Dwight Howard played there last time. I, but even that one, I would doubt. I would doubt it. He is not ready for this le- for professional basketball at any professional level. He should have stayed in college. But LeBron's ego brought him to the NBA. I don't give a shit. I don't believe for one second, for one second, that this was Bronny's call. Even though it was claimed that it was, I don't believe for a second that it was. No chance. He said that on DMD. So to me, this it just feels fake. It feels <laughs> like, all right, let's give Bronny his three minutes. We'll put him in late in the game. JJ making sure it's a big fake. Real quick, Mad Dog, you didn't watch the game clearly because it happened late in the first half. Not late in the game. It happened late in the first half, which makes it actually worse. They didn't do it during garbage time. They did it at a time where they thought their lead was big enough that they could withstand him sucking. Family moment. We can all give him a standing ovation. We'll get the grippies there. It's not a sports moment. To me, there's a fakeness to it. It's great for LeBron. And if that's the idea, fine. I'll give you that. But from a sports fan's perspective, I don't think anybody is walking around America, a sports fan, not an old white guy like me, a sports fan. I don't think anybody's walking around America saying, wow, did you see that Bronny James played with his father last night? That is not the, that's not, not happening. You could say it is, but that's a cocoon. Why? That is not happening. Why? I am a sports fan. I am an avid, I'm a rabid, fuck avid, I'm a rabid sports fan. You know what I was doing Tuesday night? We were recording a podcast. I didn't even remember the game was on. That's how uninterested, disinterested, whatever word you want to use, that's how much I didn't give a shit about the fact that Bronny and LeBron were, that LeBron was playing and, and that the Lakers were playing. Couldn't have cared less. Couldn't have cared less. In fact, we were recording a podcast. I had Nick in the line. said, oh, the game is, I'm like, the game is on. What? What game? I didn't know, nor did I care, nor did I watch. In fact, when he went in, I missed it. I was why I was recording a podcast. I turned that game on in the fourth quarter to see who would win, just to watch the end of it. But I didn't watch that game just because for Bronny James. Couldn't have cared less if he played or not. Sure, it provides content. It provides conversation. But realistically, Mad Dog's a thousand percent right. Who actually cares? If you cared about watching Braun and LeBron and LeBron, LeBron, LeBron and LeBron, LeBronny play together, then that's you. And that moment lasted two minutes and 41 seconds. And technically, they already played together. They played together in the preseason. So they already done it. What did this mean? Because the games count now? It's already happened, actually. They played together in the preseason. So what, what are we talking about? This, is a, this, was a, this was a staged, bogus, contrived, fraudulent, fabricated event. This was not history. This was bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. Those are my thoughts. I agree with Mad Dog for the most part. I don't, I, I mean, but th- this shit's embarrassing, and I'm disgusted as an NBA fan that we had to, that we're subjected to this crap. Don't know how many times we're going to have to watch this and ESPN make this a fucking story of nonsense, but they're going to do it because they made a story of him in the summer league. They made a story of him when he was playing high school. He was a McDonald's All-American, the most undeserved McDonald's All-American in the history of McDonald's All-Americans. The most unearned All-American spot in history. Lowest scoring average in the history of the McDonald's All-American teams. No one ever averaged 14 points to make that McDonald's All-American team. 
Those dudes are superstars. Most of them are projected as surefire first round draft picks when they're in high school as seniors. Get out of here, man. It's just a joke. But be sure to check out my other my other response to, to, to Mad Dog and Dan Patrick when you see the real shit come out. Be sure to subscribe to Rudy's Rant on YouTube. So go do that right now. This is Rudy's Rant. Power to come on on the podcast. Facts over feelings. Come on now.